hello good afternoon so sorry i don't have the actual gimbal today you've probably seen my short explaining or well, what's the point asking for help so this afternoon uh, I'm popping over to see a lady called Liz. Uh, I saw her the other day. Actually, I think it was last, the end of last week. Um, I miss my gimbal. Um, and basically, uh, she's had an email from the North Norfolk MP Steph Aquarum. Uh, she sent me a couple of screenshots of it last night. Um, and being today is the first day of term for many Norfolk schools, that her son, her 11 year old son, should, we'd all like to think, wouldn't we, uh, has gone to school. But um, I'm just going to take a little walk over there uh, just to touch base with her to uh, understand what is going on and to clarify uh, the emails a little bit because uh, there's been an interesting query, let's just call it that about going into the Lib Dem office the other day. So, we're going to find out what is going on. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah, no, I, I just wondering where to put the uh, camera at the moment. Actually, I need to turn it round. Just like that. Oh, God. My neck. My neck. Uh, yeah, I've had issues with my gimbal. I had issues this morning trying to get out of the house. It was just like... Really? Oh, well, yeah, because I was hoping to come and see you this morning, you see. There you go. Right. So... <laughs> Is that all right? I don't know how to kind of get it. There we go. Because uh, I ain't got the gimbal. Right, part two. Mm. So the email that um, you got last week, was it yesterday when, because it was Steph himself that sent it to you? Yes. The MP Steph that we yes. tried to see last, was it Friday? Thursday, something like that. Thursday. 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 Okay. Thursday. So you got an email from him yesterday. Yes. And school started today. Yes. And was it to say that there was a place for your son? Absolutely not. No. Um, it was basically to say that there was an incident at the office. Yeah. Because it, it, it was quite difficult. Sorry, it was quite difficult to see the screen. Oh right, when okay. I, when I, because um, I have to try and zoom in, and because yeah. when you you know when you take a picture of a screen and it goes all lines and all that. Um, plus, my eyes aren't sharp. But yeah, sorry. Um, an incident. Yes. And I've uploaded. Is that all right? I've uploaded because I sent you the link, didn't I? I think was it the same day. I'm sure it was, it was the same day when I uploaded what it was, unedited. Yeah. Um, and it was an incident. Yes. So, I, shall I read it well? Read it, yeah. yeah so, I've got an email to say, Hi Elizabeth, I hope this finds you well. My team debriefed me on an unfortunate incident in the campaign office while I was away. Some of my volunteers were left a little shaken by the experience and we have been advised to keep the door locked in future. This so is now nobody can access the Lib 
Dem office at all. Not the campaign office, no. So that is now a campaign office. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, sorry. So this isn't the environment I want to create for our volunteers. Um, I understand you want to speak to me, and I believe my office has tried to arrange this with you, but we've not heard back. I'm keen to do all I can to help you and your son. Unfortunately, as is often the case for new MPs, it is taken time to hire staff and set up a con constitution, constituency oh. office. Yeah. In the meantime, we can arrange to speak by phone or Zoom, but I hope you appreciate why we expect all constituents to behave with respect and courtesy towards staff especially when they're not actually staff, but volunteers with the local party. So, yeah. So we behaved, what did it, we behaved in what way? That last bit? Uh, um, the constituents to behave towards the staff. To behave with respect and courtesy towards staff. I think we did, didn't we? Yes. There was no swearing. There was no swearing. We, there was no abuse. We kept our space. Yeah. They explained that, well, as far as my understanding, it was a, a reception area. They had a baby cam facing us at mm -hmm. the door, so it's not like it's not like they've got the evidence or not got the evidence that we were behaving out of turn. Mm -hmm. That's a bit shitty, really, isn't it? Yeah. Because they also phoned you. What, so what was the what was the follow up from that? So Cause... basically, one of the volunteers that we spoke to on the day actually phoned me back after speaking to somebody within Stefan's office. Yeah. To say you that a bit quicker, wasn't it? Stefan would be calling me on Monday. What this this Monday? This just Monday gone? just gone. Did he? No. So obviously I chased up by email to receive that response, um, which obviously my response to that is I can assure you your volunteers had no reason to appear shaken and certainly did not appear that way. And I pointed out that one of the ladies even called me back themselves and confirmed a phone call would be made to myself yesterday from Stefan. I have a log of that call made to me, which I do. I'm very happy to provide evidence to show this, as I'm certainly not of a nature that is being portrayed. Hmm. Um, obviously, I've pointed out. However, as you appreciate, this situation has been ongoing for my son for seven years now. My son is entitled to an education. He is being denied an education. Is my son being treated with respect? No health care or education. So And there's been nothing back from No, he's he's, he's he's replied back to me. Right. So um and I think Has that was that more of a positive It was more email. of a positive email. Um I certainly stood strong that there was no reason for the staff to no. appear shaken. Well, got it on um, YouTube. If anything, I'm a little bit disappointed about hearing that because imagine how I felt for the last seven years. Yeah. Um, you know, and my son. My son's been traumatised by all this whole experience. It's traumatised our family. It's turned both my daughters and my own mental health upside down at times. Mm. Um, and quite frankly, seven years fighting to get answers Something. on health and actually an education placement suitable for him is actually not good enough at all. So who else have you reached out to? Uh, obviously I've reached out to Duncan Baker. To Duncan Baker. Um, I've spoken to a few heads of department within 
the education department at Norfolk County Council. Okay, so you've right okay i've reached out to sendias which quite frankly i found them very rude abrupt and they are they're a charity and support group for send families to help them especially with things like educational needs okay um and i was quite frankly, they're very disappointed by the phone call that I was actually given as an appointment and I was actually rushed and spoken away for and, and that was from that was from Sendias. 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 Yeah, I've not heard of that. Mm, very disappointing. Organisation, I suppose you'd call that. Yes, yes. Things that you're recommended to go to, but these things that you're recommended to go to don't actually have any support whatsoever. Right. Social services turn their back on you. So has social services been involved at I have, all? Yes. Because from the school point of view or from your point of view or from his age point of view? From um, just how we were all struggling with our mental health. Right. Um, it was school involvement. Um, there's been so many people that have been involved. Um, and it's because, just... And it's just getting nowhere. So basically, all those other little agencies have yes. just stopped. Yep. Yep. And I know what the argument would be. Um, I mean, the education, the heads of the education department don't want you to actually go to, through a tribunal. Um, and they don't feel it, you know, it's the best thing is to do. Is that what it needs to take as a tribunal? to in a sense get him in a school in a sense yes which because the funding has been denied because that's what normally a tribunal is for isn't it if if um so because of the how the process works for special needs it's totally different to a normal uh mainstream education right so let's just say for instance you went to move an area you would apply to that school within your catchment area and generally speaking you would get accepted if not you would just you know, try other schools within, within your area. location right um with special needs it's totally different it's done on a panel basis so okay. you have to put in for schools it then goes up against a panel I would say probably every quarter, maybe, um, because I haven't really been updated very well from my EHCP coordinator of what Which is actually is, going on. Um, what's, what is that? Is that so, uh, child with special needs, they will generally get what is called an EHCP, which is an educational health care plan. Right. Um, and that should correct theoretically build up a hole and support the cause for them to get a special placement because to get a special plan placement because that comes down to funding or because they've got to look at what area suits the needs of your son well what school it's i believe it's just gone so far now it's not necessary to do with it will be about funding and it's about what funding special needs are actually getting. And I've actually just recently heard that they're supposed to be cutting that back. Um, and the whole situation with, there's not enough placements. And although they've actually said that there's gonna be new schools happening within Norfolk, they're in places like Great Yarmouth or mm. Kings Lynn. And they that, that's, expect... that's one thing you said when I thought we were at the, the office. Mm. Um, as you said that for Kings Lynn to be your son being that calf that long, because with my nurse's head on, I had mm. the risk assessment that that would need mm -hmm. for that sort of car ride. Mm -hmm. um, because that impacts on taxis and taxi mm -hmm. drivers. So therefore, in you know, it's, it's other businesses isn't it, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's one thing I've learned over the years is how learning disability and mental health has become more 
um, a community thing, whereas mm-hmm. hospitals always used to protect them from yes. the outside world. Mm-hmm. Um, but now with care in the community, um, what am I trying to say? You've got to take on board, not you, but for me to look at, it's taking on board of what the risk assessments mm-hmm. are, what's required, what's needed to make it safe mm-hmm. for everybody because mm-hmm. that's care in the community. Mm-hmm. So does it really come down to the fact that North Norfolk, like Holt, Elsham, North Walsham, where else is there? I'm still learning the, the towns and places and in, in, there's nowhere. No. No. Absolutely nowhere. Not nearby. You've got Cromer. And what is at Cromer? Side strands. And I've just discovered another one, actually. So is this down to you to seek these places out to say, can you get my son in? Or is this stuff that these organisations should have tabs on to then do the work for you yeah. to say, right, we will find you a place it if is. that's what... It, but then that yeah. still comes down to yeah. funding and a tribunal. Yeah, so it's basically down to an EHCP coordinator to find you a placement that is suitable. Um, and, you know, obviously they try out, put you forward for all these placements and then there's a panel meeting that's held. So someone could have just been put on to the list to say that they need a specialist school placement um, and say they got on that list six months ago they can actually jump ahead of somebody that's been waiting three years because they can pick and choose who goes within that school because it's not the same process because it's easy for them to have that I hear who's been in to have a look, painter. <laughs> so, is it easier for them to do that? What am I trying to say? I mean, it's, it's a bit like the NHS wait, waiting list and, mm-hmm. and going private. Is, mm-hmm. is it the same sort of setup? Is, is it more of a business module or is it I actually do um, feel it's quite a business module and when I actually sit back and think about it and a lot of what I actually in a sense understand and know I feel there's actually a lot of organizations that are actually profiting in a sense from the whole situation mm. Um, mm-hmm. because obviously it's private schools and they have their funding that they require um, because they're not really mainstream schools. Um, They're not the same bodies and setups. Then if you've really got no choice but to go to tribunal, well, who's benefiting from that? But isn't it the energy and the time to go to a tribunal? Because you have to fight your corner. Just to get into that tribunal. Have you ever been to a tribunal? Uh, Have I've, you ever experienced tribunals? I've been to court cases, but not tribunals. Very similar. Yes, that's what I was thinking. But very stressful. Very stressful. Extremely stressful. It's, yes. Um, because everything is relying on that decision, and sometimes that decision mm. can take weeks. And actually, these judges are actually telling them, because the children have a right to an education... The speed to the actually processor, make maybe? a placement at these schools, which is what actually happens. So, so it's got to go through all this stress, cost, time. But why do you have to do that work? There should be a service out there that should be doing that. That should be doing it to ensure duty of care in the community, duty of care for a child and their education. Hello, Hazel. Hi. Hi. We're just recording at the moment. What? Just recording at the moment. Do you mind if we carry on? Do you want to carry on? Or do you yeah, want no, to no, pause? Because I understand right. you've got a customer. No, he's all right. You're all right. I know he's all right. And his doggy hat. You even said hello to Hazel. I know. Well, I've got things here for Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she knit that. Oh. <laughs> 
sweets for Hazel. She does, yeah. Oh, she's sitting. She does. She knows. <sighs> Just got to uh, process that a bit. How are you doing? Let me just pause this for a sec. No, I, I did. I um, sorry, customers. <laughs> um, uh, I was looking at the NNDC North Norfolk District Council um, website earlier and looking at all the different councillors and their titles um, to try and get to grips a little bit more because it's like, well, you know, I'd have thought Steph being an MP. Mm -hmm. MPs have got a little bit more clout to mm -hmm. actually step in and say, can we get this sorted quicker? Mm -hmm. You know, considering it's last week and today. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still going through them because I'm wondering who in the district council um, we need to get involved. I don't know if I'm clutching at school straws, but it's like something. Mm. Why is it so difficult? It shouldn't be so difficult. No. Especially when you've got enough no. stress as it is, looking after a, a sense child, it shouldn't be difficult. And why why, why is a tribunal the answer? Because I don't, it, it, it shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. It's, you, know, you know, that's paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. Yeah, and it? money. Which, which could they be could spend, spend in a better way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Bloody but anyway, before. Um, I paused. Where were we up to? I was thinking about... Just like... Yes, yeah, so good enough. So you were thinking about um, um, the whole situation of how it works with the panel, etc. Yeah, and finding out the different schools. So that's that's where you're up to at the moment, is it? To look for different schools. So there's yep. one in Chroma. Yep. So... What are you meant to do? Get in touch. You just wait. For, for you're not allowed to meet these. Well, you can go and see these schools, but you're not allowed to go and go to these panels or anything like that. So it's just a matter of waiting. So you've collected the details of online about the school, and you sent that to where? Uh, that goes to the EHCP coordinator. And then that coordinator gets in touch with you and say. Thanks, got your email, I'll get on to it and see yeah. what's happening. Yeah, and she just puts you forward, um, obviously for those panels, and then you don't hear... And is there a time frame on these no, panels? No, I've never get given any dates of when it's happening or the outcome of those panels. And um, nobody on that panel even meets your son? No, to... no, no one. So they're all working off paperwork that just keeps getting more and more and more and more and more. Absolutely. Absolutely. So where's your son today if he hasn't gone to school? Because that would have been the start yeah. of term for him today, wouldn't it? Yeah, so he's with my mum. And again, I actually spoke to him yesterday. And again, he would love to have a, a school placement so he can have some friends. But he wants something, and he said this himself, so that is suitable for him and his needs that are understanding and actually not going to traumatise him. That was his own words. And from the um, autism side of things with the support of that. The support of that is non-existent. So... Is there any autism groups? Is there any any form from the district council or from the government that? No. You've got autism charities. You've got, there's something called ASD Helping Hands, which is based all the way in Deerham. 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 Um, other than that, there is nothing whatsoever. So I have actually, I was contemplating actually setting up um, a parental support group 
because of what we actually go through as parents. Um, and someone was actually looking for a support group within the North Welsh and Pages. Right. And because those folks were there, I did actually reach out to say that is something that I'm looking to be doing, um, which I have had an almighty response. So there's a lot of families that are desperate. Because you're not the only one. No, I'm not the only one. I know that. And all these children are not in school yep. for relatively the same sort of reasons of yep. no placement, not no funding. No, no suitable placements. Um, we are supposed to also get provided an alternative education provision. I'm yet to Which see that is, happen. Is what? 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 What is? Well, they're very much restricted again against mainstream schools. So, what does if, that even mean? Restricted against mainstream so schools. Basically, they have a whole. I suppose, in a sense, they have some options that they can provide an alternative provision, which would be at home. Um, so, so it can be basically forcing a child who, let's be honest, autism, again, a lot of them are quite anxious. They don't really want to appear online or pictures. Um, so they force them into online classrooms, which I know is not suitable for my son because he won't engage. But there's not even funding there for somebody to come into your home and like like That's in schools you know you you get again, the special assistance don't yeah. you and, and so yeah, again you can't access that no, either no that's extremely overwhelmed overwhelmed with um, people so there's currently because there's not enough staff or because yep yeah, not enough staff and i'm getting funding um i haven't really gotten the answers as to why be the case, I suppose, in a sense, because things have got so extreme and there are so many children now out of education, it's obviously very difficult to have basically teaching staff into each and every home. Um, we did have something really good because he was actually signed off on medical needs because he was struggling so badly yet horrendous alternative provision that he was put into um signed off from the doctor or signed yeah, off signed off from the doctor the gp the gp which actually my gp didn't actually want to do um and he strongly actually put within his letter that the education department should be pulling out their finger and doing their job and finding him a suitable placement so yeah um, when he was on medical needs and because he was still like attached to an alternative provision he was entitled to a scheme which is done by the YMCA mm -hmm. um, and they set up learning online but, but it's online again it's online but he doesn't have to he can go on it absolutely any time that he likes and he doesn't have to go in and interact online. So it's just basically learning from, shall we say, like maths and English and just answering more questions or going through activities, etc. cetera, um, which was really good for him and he really engaged. But because he's not with a provision, we're not entitled to that. So they would rather say, no, you're not entitled to that, then this works for your son, we'll provide that for you. So is that so you're not entitled to that provision because did they give you a reason in Because he's not assigned to a school. And he's not assigned to a school because there isn't a placement. That's correct, yeah. So it's a vicious circle yep. of passing the buck between them all. Oh, exactly. 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 So if you got in touch with the local North Walsham High School, just so I can understand how well, I'm learning, really. Um, if you got in touch with North Walsham High School, say, 
um, or even Ashton High School, let's just say any high general high school, mm -hmm. and you said, I would like to put my son on for a placement, um, and you started that off, just like you would have done had you moved to a different area, yes. say, yeah. and you enrolled them. Could that be done, or would there be flags already being raised from that school because of X, Y, and Z, or paperwork, or...? It's an interesting one, because in actual fact, obviously we would have gone through this process actually around about this time last year, where we would have started getting all the paperwork to actually obviously enrol for high schools and yeah. put our choices down. I didn't even receive that paperwork, so I'm presuming we weren't entitled to. Um, you didn't receive no 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 so like I couldn't paperwork. no so I couldn't apply to shall we say Alsham High North Walsham any of those schools we didn't even receive the paperwork so where were you meant to receive that paperwork from because is, is it an automatically from, kind of mailing from, list that like, it just yeah. automatically goes out yeah to? it must be part and parcel of the education department but we didn't receive that so in a sense they're telling us that we're not entitled to go into mainstream schools um obviously some of them schools do have srb units and oh, what's that that's like a specialist unit right um for special needs right but that's within the school and really robert wouldn't cope in that situation anyway so we can't apply for those placements okay i just okay yeah that's on yeah hmm. so you know uh, no. I never realised that it was just an automatic thing that rolls out with mm. um I don't have children, I only have stepchildren, mm. so that that mm. I didn't realise that. No. So where are you up to now with where you are up to today? Just because did did a, an appointment get made with Steph? I, Is there a Zoom all happening is is has anything yeah i've got an appointment with steph on um friday this coming friday this coming friday okay so he's which i've agreed to but i do feel was it's... that already booked last week or the week before no, or was this was so he's he's last night kind of fast fast tracked yeah yeah okay well that's that's good that's a good response at the moment. <laughs> at the moment, yeah. yeah. that he's pulled his finger out. Yeah. I mean, actually, over the holidays as well, I have I was actually made aware that the... Because we also have an alternative provision person. Right. That is like our allocated person. Now, they didn't let me know. County Council haven't let me know. But that particular person has actually moved departments. So... Theoretically, I don't actually have an allocated person, and I've not been notified. You kind of fell through the crack. New one, so I don't really know what's going to happen there, which is interesting. So is that um, is that something you're going to? Because are you are you bullet pointing things? So when you speak to Steph, oh yeah, you've got these yeah. questions for him to yeah. answer, or hopefully, well, because that is something that he needs to know, and is I would have thought within his job. Yes. He should be able to find that out with a bit of clout being an MP because, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's in their realm, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So what would be the other things that you would ask him to, or are you just kind of, I have no idea anymore? Well, I kind of have no idea um, in a sense. Um I mean, I must admit, some days it makes me feel like giving up on the whole education thing. Mm. Um, mm. But I just want what's best for my son, really. Um, you know, he needs a chance. He's, he's 11 years old. He's 11 he needs years old. to be able to experience as much that he can possibly mm. handle um, within the education system. Do you mm. know what I mean? As well as within the health system to mm. support him and you know it's, it's what mm. multi agencies are meant to be about aren't they this is it. to all I mean, be talking yeah. and speeding things up so it's the best for the person on their on their case yes yeah. and they have a duty of care yeah just as much as i do yeah 
but obviously yeah. my hands are tied. Because if it was the other way around and you exactly. were putting your kid in school, exactly. they would be chasing you exactly. and fining you and exactly. sending you to prison, I think it still I stands I actually do it. actually feel like sending them a fine. Because obviously it's all my time and effort that I'm putting in, you know, researching, actually taking courses, you know, I think you all need to the put an emails. invoice into them to say you owe me hundred and, quids yeah, or they... and really put a fine because it's all right for them to fine people. Uh, my na- my next door neighbour has actually just been fined. What was it? She told me seven hundred and fifty pounds because she took her children on holiday. Out of seven hundred, yes. Is that how much it is now? Yes, yeah, for one day, two yeah, days, or is it just both parents each? And each. each. So it's seven hundred and fifty quid each, I think or is it three? What, it is might it three be three two five, but yeah. Jesus, crazy. Yeah. Oh my god. So they don't mind throwing those fines around, but does that therefore, you know, mean that I'm it, entitled yeah. to throw them a fine for not, not giving my son? A proper education. Have you ever gone down the route of the legal technicalities with a police officer to say where is the law on this? Is anybody I even interested? Have, and actually, a police officer very much got involved, um, obviously, to point this out to social services which would have gone through to education services and health services yeah. of the whole thing. Um, and nothing. And nothing. But they all, uh, uh, you're quite right, they all blame each other. Um, mm. You know, we are literally banging our heads against the wall, going around the circles. Not... They're the ones that can make this happen. Um, and there's always some excuse, always an excuse. So... I mean, if they listen to me right from day one, that when I said, that's the other thing that really frustrates me. And, you know, it's obviously done in a mental health way as well. You know, if you need help or, you know, reach out and speak to people. And that's like, if you've got a problem with your child, you know, at home, within school, reach out, speak to people. You do that and they don't want to know and they don't do anything. Um, which is very much like our mental health system as well. That is now kind of... one 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 is now yeah. taken over, isn't it? But it's non-existent. When you're hearing how... You know, I've I've heard so many horror stories in, in, in that sense. People are desperate to get help for their mental health. And they're quite prepared to harm themselves mm. and to get to try and get that help. And, you know... I don't people, know how the crisis team oh. works now. Um I've been out of it for too many years now yeah. on that side of the crisis team. So I don't, I don't know how they... exists. I can walk around and, and my, my, you know, I can, I can see it on the streets. And, and you see, when when I first did my mental health training, that was one yeah. of our first payment, placements, yeah. was going into the community, finding out who the doctors were, who, mm. what services were about, what shops mm-hmm. were about, you know, what a community is. Mm. Um, for it to to work with a multi-agency mm. you know it wasn't just the doctor's surgeries and the, the pharmacies you know it was it was the council mm. it was environmental agencies it mm. was housing associations it was uh, uh oh, what do you call it benefits and tribunals it mm. was it was all of that but tribunals was a lot less back then mm. um and that was my first ever placement of learning the root of mental health. Mm-hmm. So, and I walk around and it's not well, improved. It's at actually all. It's a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I know that for a fact because obviously with my daughter. Um, so she attempted to take her life. Just Whatever you say now, mm-hmm. just be aware of the impact of, of your daughter mm-hmm. because this will go up. Yeah. But yeah. because of data protection and, and all mm-hmm. that stuff, as well as privacy laws, mm-hmm. um, I'm quite staunch on that. Mm-hmm. So be comfortable with whatever you're saying, mm-hmm. but just 
be impacted mm -hmm. on your mm -hmm. if somebody sees or hears. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and I've I've spoken to you before about yeah with your daughter and everything else and mm -hmm. and, and yeah I've worked in that mm -hmm. area as well mm -hmm. funnily enough um, and it was a fight even then mm -hmm. um, with hospitals because they were closing them all mm -hmm. down closing the wards mm -hmm. it was all going to crisis team doesn't even exist overnight for children crisis team. I was, was um, never, it was always an over 18 mm. service. I don't think there is a crisis team for children, is there? Or is that something new that's come in? There that is. I'm totally unaware of. Then that's not my age group. Well, it's only from like nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I was led to believe there was a crisis team. That's what you're told actually on phone call. Right. Um, with um, mental health. Because um, is that still down in Norwich, uh, just near the. Uh, it works. There was a doctor's well, Mary Chapman um, is where... Um, just off Dereham Road. Yeah. Yeah, is that Chapman's. still there? That's still there. Because that was the children. Because it's... Yeah. Um, yeah, that dealt with under 18s. Yeah. Um, Although there's... And I went there in support of a friend yeah. with her son, actually, because he was under 18. Mm. Uh, and that wasn't very successful. No. No, it's not very successful. Again, it's a programme. It's... It's not individual... Um, it's the time there, there just wasn't enough in that service mm. to speed it up mm. to be functioning it just was like start and stop start and stop mm. months down there and it's like you know for that child that's that's a long time plus on the family yeah. the stresses oh hugely the, the worries the threats of yeah. you need to get them into school or yeah you'll get fined it's it's yeah. Yeah, and you're not a priority, even though they might have actually attempted well, as well. Yeah. Got the, I actually was physically told they've got to attempt a couple of times before they become a priority. Now, that's just playing with people's lives. Um, and this is under 18s? This is under 18s. <laughs> yeah. You could have to wait a year for a mental health appointment, even though they might have actually attempted to save their yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah, you're not a priority unless you've attempted a few times. I wonder if you... I wonder if that service is there that you could pay privately. Uh, I doubt it. I've tried to look and I can't find anything. Yeah. I know you've got private counsellors, which we have actually paid for and been through. And has that been successful? Has that it's helped? helped. To that's not been the answer, really. No, it hasn't been the answer. Because he's not at school. No, he's not. but I can't find anything that's private for mm. mental health. Um, in, mm. you know, to a degree of what National Health Service is supposed to offer. I know you, you hear about all these nurses' strikes and doctor strikes in the past, and, and I've got in touch with one of the uh, doctors that was heavily involved in, in all of that to say about, mm. you know, the psychiatry side mm. of doctoring and nursing, mm. um, you know, can that be included with, and she was like, but then that's always been, you know, you've got the general nurses, you've got the doctor, you've got mental health, you know, they're mm. all, and it's like, well, collectively, mm. surely we can all start working together because it's all about duty of care. Which yes. code of conduct, that's what that's about. Yeah. So getting back to Steph this coming Friday, mm -hmm. what questions have you come up with? What are you expecting? What's the outcome that you're expecting? And then I'm gonna leave you alone. <laughs> uh I well, in a sense, Steph needs to kind of fully know our story first. Mm. Um, and it's it's a lot. Uh, it's, yeah. it's cause you and know, yeah, and I know he's obviously going to have to. We're probably going to have to go lot. through loads of paperwork again because you have to sign to say that you know the MP can act on your behalf. Yeah. Um, and then obviously he will make, I'm guessing, calls with the education department, speak to whoever he can, and uh, we'll probably get things like more and, Zoom and, calls and keep him to keep him to a time frame of. 
yeah you know the first step one is that can be when am i going to hear from you again yep. do you know what i mean and keep yeah you know mm. probably done it the last seven years of yes keeping on top yes but those emails to say that we left them shaken was i know uh, <laughs> Is there anything else that I can do or I can help you with? What, what? Um, honestly, don't know. I definitely want to get the phone to group set up. Because mm. I think strength in numbers is always quite good, isn't it? In yeah. a sense. Yeah. But um, it's nice because you can all hear share that you're all, experiences. Yeah, same story, same. Um, yeah, I guess it's just about getting our stories out there and hoping that someone who can make a change yeah. will actually make a change. Um, because it can't, the system can't carry on as it is. No, no. Um, if they're aware that, you know, SEND children are on the increase, as they have said, then they need to be looking at other options. Um, they need to be looking at money, really, don't they? Steph, yes. Steph needs for North Norfolk. Steph needs to go to whoever it is with the budget down in London in the House of Commons to fight for more they're, money. They're cutting it. They are cutting it. This is we need him to fight for more money to stop the cuts. Yes. Yes. That's what he needs to do. Because otherwise, I have actually, to be honest, I've actually got to the point of why should I pay my council tax? And I did actually stop it for periods of time. Yeah. And I'm quite prepared actually to not pay it and actually have my day in court. But then that doesn't actually theoretically happen because I don't think you're entitled to go to court on even if that did happen. So um, I don't know. There are laws know. around. Uh, we certainly are watching all our services get cut. That's yeah. Sure. Um, there's a couple of uh, people on YouTube. Uh, black belt barrister. Um, I'd have to go through his playlist to see if he's spoken about. But there has been talk mm. about the law and mm. about not paying that legal loopholes mm. and all that stuff. But again, it's like we're all we're, we're all meant to know about everybody's job because mm. nobody's doing their job properly. No, but, no, you no. know we're no. becoming so multitasked and browbeaten yeah. as well with. Oh. We do need to hear from, because obviously in each county, um, I'm guessing, you know, those heads of department are the ones that make the choices. We need well, to somebody be is, aren't they? hearing about but who, who what knows? are they actually doing. Because um, they can certainly, I mean, did I hear that they're going to be selling off F-35 jets or something? You know, like. Jeremy Corbyn says, I've got money for war. Yes, always got money you know? for war. Um, and it's actually, most people probably don't actually want wars. War. No. No. I don't want to be involved in them. Don't want to, I don't want to pay tax for that tax no. and then no. supply companies with bullets and stuff. That's no. we're going slightly off topic, but, but money needs to be spent here. Yes. Um, on the people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree, if, if you've got the energy and the time to get your group started, mm -hmm. um, maybe that's a way forward for, I mean, it's in, it just appears, I don't know, you just feel very shut down all the time mm -hmm. and you're not entitled to say anything about it. Um, well, if you ever know anyone that wants to talk, I'm mm -hmm. always here to listen, unless I've got that. Because it, it's, I don't know how, I, I don't know how else no. to raise all this awareness. No. Because I've got my own work experience of it and my own life experience of it. Mm. And when's it going to change? I thought, you know, with, mm. you know, with, um, listening to Carol Wardman and changing it all and getting the different government in that, you know, things might change for better and it's like it's still early days you know mm -hmm. um hopefully steph will 
step up and fight, but or he might not. Mm. But if he doesn't, what else is there left to do? That's right. that's what I find frustrating. In everybody's story that I hear, it always comes back to what else can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Watch his face. Mm. I'm so sorry, Liz. No, no. Shit. It's it's quite disgusting. Absolute shit. Mm. Well, on uh, Friday, keep me in touch. Keep me posted. Yeah. Um, Because I'd like to know. You know, I don't want to just. No upload it and go well that story's done I'm moving on do you know what I mean it's yep. not that it's just following it through just to make sure that um because yep. somebody else could watch this and say we're going through the same thing and can I identify with mm. you or what you're saying and, and mm. it's a case of mm. they will then realize that they're not alone yeah and what ways what ideas can be done by this to make it work better mm. No. Right. Well, thank you. I'll leave you be now. Are you okay? Yep. Yep. All right. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for Friday. Fingers crossed for Friday. And I'm going to go home and see what on earth is going on with my gimbal. First world problems. I'll do this and I'll send it to you and okay. have a listen back. Yeah. And then okay. if there's anything that you feel that needs to be talked about more or explained more, yeah. just let me know. Yeah. Um, and as the Terminator says, I'll be back. Yeah. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Yep. In it just.